this is Josh White with JW Math Tutoring. In today's video, I'm going to highlight 20 repeat problems from the November 2025 Digital SAT Math Test that I've already covered in previous videos. So let's go ahead and get right to it. But life is a dream the calculus could never predict. Before I start going through um, these repeat problems that appeared on the November 2025 uh, Digital SAT Math Test. I uh, just want to mention a couple things. First, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and sign up for notifications. Second, if you are looking for the new problems worked out you know, in detail, full solutions and explanations, uh, check out uh, videos, uh, worksheets, uh, part one and part two, where I go through nine problems uh, in each that appeared on the November uh, 2025 official SAT math exams. All right, and now, uh, also, sorry, one other thing, uh, there will be a PDF file, which will have, you know, basically what you see on the screen right here, linked in the description of the video and also in the pinned comment of the video. And lastly, uh, so this video is not going to go through full solutions and explanations. Basically, these are problems that I have covered previously in prior videos. So these are what I'm calling repeat problems. I'm just going to briefly touch on them, mention, um, you know, we'll have the basic setup of the problem. So if you had that one, you can go back, look at the video or the worksheet for the specific month and year and worksheet number and problem number that's listed, you know, on the screen or in the PDF file. Okay. So that's what you should do if you want to see the full solution and the full problem uh, worked out in detail. All right, so let's get started. There should be a total of 20 problems um, on this, by the way, if I counted correctly. Uh, so first one, this is a problem where uh, for a right rectangular prism, actually, sorry, it's not prism. This is wrong. This is, it's a pyramid is the problem I was looking at because slant heights applied to pyramids. So the person used the wrong word here in this comment, um, but it's really it's talking about a pyramid with a rectangular base, not a square base, asking for the total surface area. Um, so this one, go ahead and check out August 2025. Uh, problem worked out in detail uh, with all those values. All right, number two. This is the percentage question, and we've seen a ton of these where it's like, you know, A is whatever percent of B, and C is whatever percent of B, or A is whatever percent of C, or however, you know, it could be set up multiple different ways, and then the last part is usually like A is P percent of whatever, or B is P percent of C, or whatever, you know, the other two uh, letters are. And there's some slight variations too. Sometimes it asks for like A minus B equals P percent of C or something. But anyways, uh, I've done a ton of examples of these types of advanced percentage problems. So go ahead and check these out. I would probably recommend also checking, making sure you um, check out the later ones because those will show you how you can solve the entire thing uh, using regression. Whereas the earlier examples um, will not. You know, the ones from earlier in 2024 will not have uh, that demonstrated. Okay, problem number three, uh, the triangle inequality theorem. This is a problem where they basically give you two sides of a triangle, and then they either ask, like, which, what cannot be the value for the third side, or they say what, uh, they give you a bunch of inequalities, and they say what shows the range of all possible values for the third side. And it would be like, you know, 2 is less than x is less than 10, or 3 is less than x is less than 9, or something like that. Anyways, if you had a problem like that or want to review the triangle inequality theorem, go ahead and check out March 2025. All right, fourth problem. So it's a little bit difficult, to, obviously, to type it out or write it out um, when you're doing so on Reddit. But really, this is a problem that it looks like this. You have x equals 2n, and then underneath here, it's like x to the n plus some number, and basically it asks for what the value of x to the n is. And essentially you raise both sides to the 2n power and then it turns into a quadratic or it's a quadratic form equation and you end up factoring it like a quadratic and so on and so forth. Check out um, the two examples that I've previously done those in June uh, 2025 and August of the same year. All right, number five. So this is a question where uh, basically there was a table provided and you have like say, uh, rectangle A and rectangle B, 
and they give you their areas and they give you one perimeter but not the other one and they want you to find the other perimeter. So this deals with similar figures. Now, technically, if you're dealing with a rectangle, that's a 2D figure. A lot of most of the examples here are of 3D figures, meaning uh, rectangular prisms or cylinders. I uh, don't know if there's any with spheres, but the concepts of how to relate area factor or volume factor to scale factor and, you know, find the relationships between them are the same. So go ahead and check out these previous examples if you want to practice with that skill or that concept. All right, let's go to the top of the next page. Um, this is a factoring question. It should be a question number six right now. Uh, if you had a question that looked similar to this, where you basically factor it by pulling out the common factor of x minus 5, and then what you're left with factors as a difference of squares, so then you got to factor that, and it basically says, like, what, which of the following is a factor of, you know, when you're given this expression. So check out the example from June 2025 if you had a problem similar to that. All right, question 7 uh, dealt with percentage increases. And... There's multiple, you know, like variations of this, but essentially it's like you start with some number and then it increased by whatever percent for the next year, and then it increased or decreased by another percent for the following year, and then it asked to relate like the starting year, which in this case, example 2014, to the ending year. It's like one is y times the other one, and it could be set up either way. It could be smaller equals y times larger, or it could be y times smaller equals larger. Okay, so you just have to be careful in how you read the question, but check out um, again this problem from June 2025, worksheet in three, problem five, for a similar example to that. All right, uh, next question, number eight. Here you have a factoring problem, but notice it's not a quadratic, it's technically a fourth degree polynomial. And it's asking about, it's saying it can be factored, um, <coughs> you know, where A and B are integer values. And it wants to know what's a possible value for A times B. So if you want to see an example of how this problem is done, check out August 2025, you know, worksheet for problem two. All right, next up should be a question number nine now. Uh, this is a problem where you had some type of quadratic equation on a graph. Okay. And they gave you like what the model, what the form, not the form, the equation for it was, you know, the model based on the various points that you were given. But there was some random outlier point that was included to calculate this model. So really, if you look at the graph, really the graph probably looked, say, like something more like, would look something more like this. And then it's asking, what happens if you take that outlier value away? So check out the example I did from June 2025, worksheet number four, problem one. Okay, question number 10. Uh, this is a problem where they give you the perimeter of an isosceles right triangle, meaning it's a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, you know, which is like x, x, x root 2. And then they ask you what the hypotenuse value is. Or they could ask you what the leg is. It doesn't, you know, there's different variations. But the whole idea is you have the perimeter of an isosceles right triangle. Find the length of one of the sides, whichever one they tell you to. And there's two examples that I've done previously that you can see um, on the screen here. All right, uh, another similar problem uh, to one I've done before. So you had a line, basically, I think, the, again, the setup could slightly, could vary slightly, but say you're given the equation of a line, and then you're told, okay, this other line is perpendicular to this. So you get the slope by taking, you know, opposite reciprocal of this new line, and it tells you the new line goes through these two points, but notice the points have a constant in them, k. Okay, it doesn't give you actual coordinate points with numbers. Um, if you want to see, if you got this problem, want to see an example how to solve this, go ahead and check out, you know, the June 2025 worksheet number two, problem 10. All right, let's go to the third page. So here I've included the picture, um, but technically in the problem itself, I believe they do not give you the picture. It's all text. So the wording for this problem, uh, let me just confirm here. We are at problem number 12. The wording for this problem would be something like uh, ABC is an isosceles right triangle. Okay, so you're told that like that two of the sides are congruent. So that means these angles are congruent, and you need that in order to solve it. ABC is an isosceles right triangle, and then you have points on the two congruent sides, and 
basically there's line segments connecting from a common point, which is on the base down here, that forms these two smaller triangles. And it also tells you the relationship between, say, like this thing to the whole base. You know, it's like four sevenths of the whole base, or it's five ninths of the whole base, or whatever, some you know, fraction of it. So if you had this problem, want to see how it's worked out, uh, go look at the two examples that are on the screen uh, listed there. Okay, next, we're at number 13. This is a basically percentage problem. Um, it's about number of people attending a, a meeting or a webinar is also a common example that we've seen. You know, so many people attended the first meeting and then um, uh, some percentage of that attended the second meeting and then some percentage that attended the second attended the third, but some percent that didn't attend the second also attended the third and whatever. They give you a bunch of percentages and they want to know, okay, what's the total number percent or total number of people that attended the third meeting? If you want to see an example of this, again, go ahead and check out August 2024, Worksheet 3, Problem 8. Okay, next is a problem where they give you, uh, number 14 by the way, they give you a function and it looks like this, x squared plus bx plus c, f of x equals, and they give you two points. And one of them is usually 2, 0, and the other is 0, negative square root something. It could be 290, it could be 334, there's a bunch of different, you know, numbers we've seen. Um, and the question has typically asked, what's the greatest value of m where f of m equals 0? In other words, it's asking for what is the largest x-intercept value, or what is the largest 0 of the function? In some cases, people have reported asked for the smallest value. In that case, it just is 2, the one they give you. But most of the time, they're asking for the largest value. So if you want to see how this is done, check out the two examples uh, that I've worked out previously. Next up, question 15. Um, here you have a cone and you are given basically its base area, you know, the area of the circle down here, and you're given, you know, it's just pi r squared, and you're given the slant height here, and uh, they want you to find the height, the overall height of the cone. I guess you also would need to be given either the total volume or the total lateral surface area, you know, one of those two things, but um, to, bef to find the uh, height of the cone. But check out the problem from June 2024, uh, Worksheet 1, Problem 17, to see that one worked out in detail. All right, last page. We are up to question number 16. So these are problems where you have a data set, or they tell you about a data set that has like however many numbers in it. Then they make a new data set where they either add a, they keep the same numbers, but they add one to it, or they take a number away from it, okay? So basically, data set B is the same as data set A, except it has one number added or one number subtracted from it. And then they ask you about, like, does the mean change? Does the median change? Does the range change, maybe? Or some other, you know, and something about the common um, statistics. So if you want to see examples that cover this topic, check out all the examples um, that I have listed there on the screen. Okay, next question, we're up to 17. Uh, this is an equation of a circle, not in standard form, and it has a constant in it. This would just be like, you know, basically like that. It's x square root t. And it tells you what the radius of the circle is. So the way radius of the circle is square root 82. And it says, what's, you know, what's the value of the constant? What's the value of t? If you want to see examples of how to do this, including using regression, check out uh, these two examples that are listed on the screen here. Next, number 18, it's another percentage question. Um, basically, this is one about like different types of water, like the calcium percentage, calcium con concentrate percentage in bottled water versus tap water versus mineral water, and they're all related. It's, it's really just like a, A is whatever percent of B, B is whatever percent of C, what is A percent, A is P percent of C. It's really that type of problem. Um, it's just worded a little bit differently. But if you want to see an example similar to this, if you got this problem, check out May 2025, Worksheet 3, Problem 4. All right, next. Um, this is a problem where basically you're given uh, some form of a function. I think it looks like this, something like this. It's like on the bottom you have some uh, linear function, like maybe 2x plus c or x plus c or whatever. And on the top you have a quadratic Maybe it's, <clears throat> if 
forget exactly. I have to go back and look at the worksheet. But there's a constant. There are three constants in this A, B, and C. They give you two points, two values. In this case, two x-intercepts. You know, four zero and nine zero. And then they also tell you that the graph doesn't touch x equals whatever. That basically they're telling you there's a vertical asymptote at x equals whatever. And those three pieces of information allow you to find C, that's from the vertical asymptote part, and then A and B comes from the two zeros that they give you, the two points. And then you just have to find all the constants and add them all up. Anyways, if you want to see an identical problem to this, if you had this problem, check out March 2025, Worksheet 3, Problem 3. It's worked out. And the last one, number 20, this is basically the type of problem where um, it's like you're given the area of one figure, and then you're told that the length of each side on a smaller figure is whatever percent or whatever fraction times the length of the sides for the bigger one. And it's so basically it's like you're taking the area for the large and you're finding the area of the small, but they're giving you the scale factor, the, you know, the one dimensional um, relationship between the sides. And you have to, you know, basically multiply that to get the area factor to then uh you know, relate them, divide them, find the area of the small or the large based on whatever you're given. All right, so check out uh, these two examples listed on the screen. Again, one, August 2024. The other one, it's just identical to one of the practice problems on linear paper test number 10. All right, so again, that was just a brief overview that was basically like just highlighting 20 questions in about 16 minutes here that appeared on the November exam, but that are repeat questions that we've seen before, that I've worked out before. So if you had any of these questions, go to the specific, you know, month and year and worksheet and problem number and work, you know, try to work them out. You can see the full problems there and then watch the video solutions um, online. You know, everything's listed in my uh, <clears throat> official test playlist. You know, all the videos starting from like uh, May 2024 up to the present. Um, also, another thing just to mention too, if you haven't done so, uh, there is a spreadsheet, in both Excel form and also in PDF form, which has all the questions from the official test worksheets. So it's got obviously the month and the year and the worksheet number and the problem number, and then it's got the main broad topic, and then it's got a subtopic, which is a little more specific, so you can sort and filter by that. And then for the questions, some of them it has basically the full question, some it just has the general description, but it's an easy document that you can search and sort and filter by. So if you want to find questions of a specific type or problems, you know, that cover a specific topic, you can easily do that. And the November, the new November questions will be added to it um, soon, you know, just like when the uh, within the next couple of days. So there'll be links to that as well, both in the description and in uh, the pinned comment of the video. Otherwise, just one last thing, if you're looking to improve your knowledge of Desmos, please do check out my ultimate Desmos guide to digital SAT math. It is over 5.5 hours of tips and tricks and instruction and 65 practice problems to help you ace the digital SAT math section by using Desmos.